Well, it's not easy to pick the most embarrassing day in Rudy Giuliani's life. And of course, it could be that his most embarrassing days are of, ahead of him if and when he is charged with crimes by Special Prosecutor Jack Smith or by Atlanta District Attorney Fawny Willis. And of course, even more embarrassing than being charged with crimes is being convicted of crimes. And that could be in Rudy Giuliani's future, too. But as of tonight, the most embarrassing day of Rudy Giuliani's life was November 19th, 2020, 16 days after Election Day, 12 days after the presidential election was called for Joe Biden. It was the day that Rudy Giuliani combined sounding stupid with looking stupid more fully than ever before, because that was the day that Rudy Giuliani's hair dye decided to start dripping down the sides of his face when he got overheated telling lies about the presidential election. In the states that we have indicated in red, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Arizona, we more than double the number of votes needed to overturn the election in terms of provable illegal ballots. All you got to do to find out if I'm misleading you at all, is to look at the lawsuit. Look what's alleged, look at the affidavits. And when America saw that, every sane person saw Rudy Giuliani as a pathetic, lying clown. Surely most Trump voters knew Rudy Giuliani was an absurdity by that point. But the most fanatical Trump supporters, the Trump supporters who were willing to believe and tell any lie to try to steal the presidential election from Joe Biden loved it. And while the hair dye was flowing down Rudy Giuliani's face, tears were flowing on another true believer's face. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas's wife, Virginia Thomas, texted Donald Trump's last chief of staff, Mark Meadows, at the White House while Rudy Giuliani was speaking and while the hair dye was flowing, and she said, tears are flowing at what Rudy is doing right now, exclamation point and question marks. Mark Meadows seemed a bit confused, maybe by the question marks. Were those tears of joy, tears of embarrassment? What, what did she mean? Tears at Rudy Giuliani destroying any tiny shred of credibility he had left? Mark Meadows replied neutrally, glad to help, to which Ginny Thomas wrote, whoa, heroes. So while Rudy Giuliani was coming apart on TV in the most humiliating possible way, Ginny Thomas thought he was a hero and she was crying in admiration of that hero. Tears are flowing, she said. What was the Thomas dinner table like that night? Were the tears still flowing? After going through an emotional day like that, did Ginny Thomas tell her husband about Rudy Giuliani's heroism? Did Ginny Thomas tell her husband, the Supreme Court Justice, about what she went through emotionally that day, about the tears that were flowing? Did Ginny Thomas tell her husband that she was so excited she texted the White House Chief of Staff to tell him that her tears were flowing? It's very hard to imagine that she didn't tell her husband about that. But Clarence Thomas did not recuse himself when the Supreme Court considered a case involving Mark Meadows' texts and emails. Clarence Thomas was the only Supreme Court justice who thought those texts should not be handed over to the January 6th committee. Those texts include texts from Clarence Thomas's wife to Mark Meadows and from Mark Meadows to Clarence Thomas's wife. The January 6th committee has thousands more texts to and from Mark Meadows. And this week, Talking Points Memo has been publishing many of them. At a public hearing on Monday next week, the January 6th committee will vote on possible criminal referrals that the committee may choose to make to the Justice Department. At a press conference this afternoon, House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy was asked about the January 6th committee's upcoming report. Mr. Leader, uh, the January 6th committee is going to release the final report next week. Can you or any of your colleagues 
may be referred for criminal contempt for ignoring this. I'll answer your last question first. No, not at all. We did nothing wrong. Many of Donald Trump's staunchest allies in the House of Representatives are currently making life miserable for Kevin McCarthy in his quest to be Speaker of the House when the next Congress is sworn in in January. The Washington Post reports in the House, far right members are continuing to make demands of minority leader Kevin McCarthy in exchange for their support as he desperately works to secure enough votes to become Speaker next month. The small band of GOP members is promising they will never support McCarthy, raising questions about whether he'll be able to find the needed votes no, ma <clears throat> no matter how far he bends. Far-right lawmakers have demanded the restoration of the motion to vacate, a procedural rule that allows any member to call a vote to remove the Speaker of the House. 